Hello, sweet team. Welcome back to my channel. This is Sweet Ajele with this highly requested video for you all. I hope you will sit back, get your popcorn, and enjoy because we are going to be prepping and storing our produce, our fruits and vegetables. And right now, I've washed these strawberries and I'm spraying it with some vinegar and I'll let it sit for about five minutes. Then I'll give it another good, good wash before storing it. Now, I'm using the vinegar because we all know what's going on in the world right now and I spray it with the vinegar so it can kill any bacteria that is on there to at least to give me peace of mind because I cannot wash <laughs> my fruits and vegetables with soap and water especially strawberries maybe oranges or pineapple you could but with these type of fruits that you cannot I choose to use the vinegar actually I use the vinegar for everything now and I think once this is over this is going to be my new way of um, washing and cleaning my produce Okay, so once the strawberries are nicely washed, I core it. I take out the part that we don't want to eat and then I'll set it aside and begin on my next produce. In this case, it's my carrot. So I'll wash it beautifully and then I'm going to go ahead and spray it. So in the time that I will be putting away my um, strawberries, it'll be disinfecting if you want to call it that <laughs> so yeah i'll spray it nicely sit it down and attend to the strawberries so in a ziploc bag i'm going to arrange my strawberries in a row i don't want any to sit on top of the other this way once it freezes i can separate them easily okay so once this is done you want to label and date it and put it away now back to my carrots i like to rub my hands around it you know in an effort to clean it even better before i even open the water to make sure that i wash it really really well then i go ahead and peel it very very nicely and set it aside while this is resting beautifully and waiting for me to prep and store i will immediately begin with my potatoes i'm going to take it through the same process give it a very good wash to get the dirt off then spray it with my vinegar and set it aside and attend to my carrots with the carrots you want to cut it into your desired shapes and sizes so what i did was to slice some dice some and yeah i'm going to put it in a ziplock bag as well flatten it out so that they're not sitting you know really on top of each other and then i'm going to go ahead and stack them on top of one another and label date and go ahead and freeze it i'm not making a lot of these and because we're stuck at home all we're doing right now is eat 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 okay so here's everything done i'm going to transfer that into my freezer and back to my potatoes i'm going to give it a good wash right now i don't have any yam so potatoes have become like yam in my house so what i'll do is to peel it very well and then wash it one more time once that is done i'm going to cut it into my desired shapes and sizes because the one that i want to enjoy as yam have to obviously be cut in bigger chunks and then i'll prep one that i'll use for home fry breakfast and then i'll also make french fries while that's going on you know the drill we get started with our tomatoes I 
I'm cutting this into home fries because yeah I love my home fries I leave the link to that recipe in the description box below in case you wish to see how that is made I'll then transfer it into a ziplock bag so pretty much yeah everything into a ziplock bag label and date it and go ahead and freeze it but you want to freeze it in such a way that it'll be easy for you to take apart not that they're all stuck together and giving you wahala <laughs> with these ones i cut them into bigger chunks because i'll be using it in place of yam because i don't have any as i said and enjoy it with my stews and as you know the kids are home so i'll make them their french fries and yeah at least you know you made it and you know what is in it it's also known as chips in Ghana okay at this point I have some water boiling so I'm going to go ahead and cook this for about five to ten minutes in it you do not want to cook this until it is mushy okay so stick to about five minutes that will do so season your water put your potatoes in there and allow it to cook for about five minutes once that is done I'm going to spread it out to cool completely while that is going on i'll get started with my tomatoes i'm going to peel part of it and then i'm going to go ahead and cut up part of it and the other part i'll just freeze whole okay when you freeze it whole you can just take them out use it in your soups and stews you can even throw it out and use it to grind your pepper for your bangkung and kinky <laughs> all right so now that it's been sitting for about 10 minutes it's beginning to crack you want to get it out and peel it beautifully the reason why i don't like to put my tomatoes on fire and bring it to a boil before peeling is that it'll cook it but with this way it doesn't cook it at all it still remains fresh and you can actually use this to grind your pepper as well you can deseed it if you want i'm deseeding it through a, a strainer so that i can catch the juices that comes out of the seed and i'll store my tomatoes in there so as i said you can store them whole or you can go ahead and cut them up into your preferred sizes i'm dicing mine and i'll add it into the juice you can store this in your refrigerator or in your freezer i will be storing mine in the freezer and finally i'm just going to slice some and store it for our sandwiches salads and even as topping for pizza if you wish and i line my container with um wax paper before lining it i mean if you have containers at home you can store all these in a container with your wax paper i love that better because when you're storing your produce in your freezer the moisture that escapes your um wax paper will catch it and then you can just take it off and toss it all right now i'm going to give this um fries a quick fry not to cook it completely at this point it's edible you can eat it but it's not crunchy you just want to cook it to seal it so that it doesn't fall apart in your freezer when you are keeping it in there so now i'm just lining it back up to cool completely and as you can see the inside is nice and mushy so once you fry this you know it's going to be delicious so yeah i arranged that and i'm going to go ahead and start it in a Ghanaian household we need our plantain so so we have to prep and store that as well also our lemons and our lime so yeah i'm just going to let y'all enjoy this because it's pretty much the same routine that i'll do over and over again if i have to explain something then i'll pop back in so enjoy
So I'm also going to be juicing some of the lemon and before I juice it, I'm going to zest it because I want to have the zest for my baking recipes. It's not all the time that you're going to bake that you may have orange or lemon at home that you can zest. So with my prep of the lemons and oranges, I'm going to zest some for future recipes and I keep it in the freezer. So I'm going to juice some of the um, lemon and store it in a jar or wherever, whatever you want to store it in. And if you don't have a juicer, you can use a fork to juice your lemons and limes, also your oranges anyway. And yeah. And I'll be storing this in my refrigerator because we will use it immediately and the rest will go the sliced up ones will go in the freezer once it's frozen you can take it out of the container and put it in a ziploc bag but I'll just leave mine in the container and use it as I go and the slices you can use in so many ways you can wedge them if you like but I chose to slice mine up and I also um, keep the zest in a container in a freezer and when I'm ready to use it if it's stuck together I, I'll just put it in a ziplock or any other type of bag and just crush it up with like a, a rolling pin or something like that so yeah this is what the lemon and lime look like I'm just going to cover them up and put them away and now onto my oranges I've gone through the same routine with them I'll zest and store the zest as well and then I'm going to pair some of the oranges and then juice some and then I'll just leave some out for us to enjoy right away but when you have kids at home that doesn't really care to enjoy oranges you need to find ways to have them enjoy it so I'm just going to go ahead and peel them nicely and pair them now what I'm doing trust and believe me I sat there and ate everything that was stuck <laughs> on the inside look I'm a Ghana girl and I don't like to waste food I remember when I learned how to pair oranges in school. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in fite akutue. They are wasting the orange. But trust me, if you do it this way, your kids will enjoy oranges even better. Okay? Trust me on this one. So after you peel it, you want to ensure that there's no white part on it just like this and we're going to go ahead and pair it and you want to cut it alongside those um vein like parts in the orange i'm not sure what they're called so yeah you just want to take the meat out just like that and you go around and you take everything out so that is how you pair an orange After pairing each orange, I try to squeeze out any leftover juice that's in there before I move on to the next one. Then I'm going to go ahead and juice some of my oranges. Then I'll transfer these paired oranges into these mini containers that you can just keep in your refrigerator. Your kids can just grab one and enjoy or you can also keep it in your freezer and if you're gonna take it to work by the time you get to work it'll thaw beautifully for you to enjoy so yeah once we add everything into the containers we're going to top it up with the juices because you don't want it to dry out you want it to sit in the juice and it's oh my goodness this is so beautiful you will end up eating all of this thing so you know you discipline yourself so that you don't finish it all and this batch of oranges was so so delicious so now onto my corn it's i'm almost done i'm washing it to get rid of all the silk that is on there and then i'll spray it with my vinegar as usual set it aside and let it marinate and disinfect before I use it this is if you buy the ones that have already been peeled in the store okay and 
I don't think you should. But if that's the only one there, hey, this is how you could prep it. But with the ones that are unpeeled, I spray it the same way and I'll allow it to sit for a while. Then I'll come and take all the husk off of it. Then give it a second spray and a wash before I go ahead and start it. Next, we're going to dab a paper towel on it to get rid of any excess water because once you put it in the freezer, the water is going to freeze on it and you do not want that. Then I'll break it in halves to store. You can store the whole thing if you like, but I think when you break it in half, if somebody doesn't want to finish the whole thing, they don't have to waste it, you know? You can also take it right off the cob and store it in your freezer for your rice recipes and, you know, other things if you don't want to enjoy it on the cob. Like, we like our corn on the cob, but hey, at times we have to have this too. <laughs> I'm usually able to store my produce in my freezer for up to a year but every now and then you want to check it to ensure that it's not taking on too much ice and if you have a vacuum sealer perfect you can go right ahead and use that okay finally i'll be storing some onions and i've cut them into my preferred shape and sizes and you want to separate them to ensure that they're not sticking together and yeah that is it as y'all know i love to freeze my ginger i've been doing that for many many years because it grates so beautifully so easily and it looks like snow once it's done you won't see no stringy parts in your ginger or anything like that so yeah i cleaned and um took off the skin and everything and yeah we are done but once it is frozen because i didn't use my regular flash freezing method where i could just take the plastic wrap off it and all the moisture will be stuck on it the moisture trapped in the bag so you have to get rid of it because that moisture turned into ice so you want to take it out shake it off and then break anything that's sticking together apart and put it back in your ziplock bags and store it if you have watched until this point you are a super sweet team member and i absolutely love and adore you thank you all so so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you're a new subscriber welcome to my channel this is sweet ajele thank you so much for subscribing and to the sweet team y'all know i love you until i see you in my next video stay safe keep loving each other and remember that the love of family is life's greatest blessing and guys ke onamini uchemi suite maha botu bye y'all the french fries doesn't usually form a lot of ice because most of the moisture have already been cooked out of it. Did I say goodbye? I sure did. I love you. Bye. <laughs>